Do you know where the saying, blowing smoke up your ass" comes from? Well, 300 years ago, doctors believed that if you blew smoke up the rectum of somebody who had died drowning, it would bring them back to life. Seriously, it's true. The medical establishment of the time thought that a tobacco enema could snatch a drowning victim from the jaws of death. The logic behind this was that the nicotine would act as a stimulant, while the smoke would dry out the lungs and help warm the body. In fact, it was so widely believed that along the banks of the River Thames in London, they placed sets of bellows especially for the purpose of blowing smoke into the rectums of people who had fallen into the river. While this sounds ridiculous today, the belief that it could save lives persisted for almost a hundred years. During this time, a lot of money was made by the manufacturers of these supposedly life-saving bellows, and despite nobody coming back from the dead, the manufacturers encouraged the belief that it could work to help them sell more of the bellows. Luckily, you and I live in more enlightened times. Surely nobody would practice unproven medicine in order to make a profit these days. IVF clinics are ripping off desperate couples. Fertility clinic success rates are misleading and possibly dishonest. IVF clinics investigated over claims of falsely inflating success rates. The great IVF ripoff. Clinics are charging desperate couples thousands of pounds for extras which do not work. $47,000 later, I have no baby. IVF industry criticised for misleading claims and aggressive marketing. It is a sad fact of life that in every industry there are a few individuals who abuse the system for their own profits. And as we can see from these headlines, the fertility industry is not immune. There are a small number of doctors and clinics who are more interested in putting money in their own pockets than helping you with your dreams of having a baby. But what these news stories fail to tell you though is how to avoid getting ripped off yourself. This is why we at conceptionadvice.com have created this guide. It is based on feedback from doctors, stories from patients and our own personal experience. This guide will teach you how to identify and avoid the following. How some clinics push for more expensive treatments, when cheaper ones work just as well or even better. The add-on treatments that cost you extra but don't improve your chances of getting pregnant. How to find the cheapest price for any fertility drugs you may need. And how to find the hidden costs so you don't get a surprise bill for them later. By the way, if you're interested in any of those news articles I mentioned earlier, I've included links to them in the notes of this video. So let's get started. There is a tendency for fertility clinics to jump straight to recommending IVF without first exploring other options. But quite often, there are cheaper and less invasive treatments that could work just as well as IVF or even better. Treatments like ovarian stimulation, interuterine insemination and follicle tracking. But sometimes, all that couples really need is to try a little bit longer. Though, you aren't likely to find many fertility clinics that recommend you doing that. So, why do clinics push IVF? Well, fertility doctors tend to have their most experience with performing IVF. So naturally, they prefer to recommend that option. It's a bit like the old saying, if your favourite tool is a hammer, suddenly all of your problems look a lot like nails. Of course, IVF is also one of the more expensive treatments, and therefore, where more profit can be made. And since most people expect to be given IVF, it's an easy thing to sell. So how do you know if there is a better treatment for you? Well, if you're told you need IVF, then there are some simple steps you can take to see if other options might be better for you. Step one, make sure you know why you are having problems conceiving. The treatment you receive should be based upon what is wrong with you. If they don't know what the problem is, how do they know that another treatment won't be better for you? Or that IVF will even work for that matter? So before accepting a treatment, make sure you've received the standard fertility tests and know the cause of your infertility. I've included a link to a description of the standard fertility tests in the notes of this video. Step two. Ask about alternatives. 
If a clinic recommends IVF without having talked to you about the alternative treatment types, ask them what other treatments might be appropriate to your situation. If they simply say they won't work, ask them to talk you through the different treatment types and why they won't work for you. That way, you'll know that they have at least considered the alternatives and you'll have reasons why they won't work in your situation. Step three, get a second opinion. You are not committed to a clinic just because they have performed tests and given you a treatment plan. Any test results belong to you and you are free to take them to other clinics. Have the doctors at these clinics look over the results and offer you a treatment plan based upon what they think is best for you. Do you know the difference between a quote and an estimate? I found out the hard way when I hired an electrician to do some work for me and received a much bigger bill than I had expected. When I challenged him over this, he said it was quite clear on the paperwork that the price he had given me was an estimate and that the cost of the work had gone up. It was only after he left that I found out that if I had wanted a fixed price, I should have asked for a quote and not accepted an estimate. Unfortunately, the practice of not including everything in the price up front isn't limited to cowboy tradesmen. A few unscrupulous fertility clinics advertise headline prices that are missing vital parts of the treatment. These hidden costs can include drugs, scans, tests, embryo freezing, lab work, anaesthetic, and additional procedures like intracytoplasmic sperm injection. This list is not exclusive and there may be other necessary items not included. Make sure you don't get caught out by these hidden costs. Ask for the full amount you can expect to pay, making it clear that they should include all the costs, whether they are the responsibility of the clinic or not. Would you pay three times the price for a packet of aspirin when you can nip to the shop next door and buy them at the normal price? No, well, the same applies to fertility medications. And I can tell you right now, they cost a lot more than a packet of aspirin. Your fertility clinic will offer to sell you these drugs, but it is usually at a premium. However, if you shop around, you can often find other suppliers that are much cheaper. As long as the drug and the dosage are the same, there is no difference if you get it from one licensed retailer or another. Hospital pharmacies are a good place to start comparing prices as they often sell fertility drugs cheaply. And strange as it may sound, at the time of filming this, one of the best places to purchase fertility drugs is a leading UK supermarket. They are able to do this by selling the drugs as non-profit. Make sure you do your own research though, as prices do vary between regions. A word of warning, do not purchase drugs from unlicensed or off-label websites. You have no way of knowing whether the drugs you receive are real or not. This doesn't just apply to fertility drugs, and you may be endangering your own life by taking medication purchased this way. Always buy medication, fertility drugs or otherwise, from licensed suppliers. If you broke your arm, you wouldn't pay someone for a foot massage in the hope that it might make it better. Yet, the equivalent of this is what some fertility clinics offer their patients. Acupuncture, homeopathy, fertility massage, reflexology, guided meditation, and hydrotherapy. While these treatments may have their place in treating other conditions, Repeated testing has shown time and time again there is no direct link between them and improving your chances of becoming pregnant. However, these treatments are relatively cheap, can help relieve stress and can give you the feeling of being in control. And a positive attitude just might help you conceive. So if you've got the money to spare and you think that they may be of some benefit, then there is no harm in you going for them. But if you're on a tight budget or don't believe in them, don't take them. What you really want to avoid though are the expensive, unproven, experimental and potentially dangerous add-on treatments 
that I'm going to be talking to you about next. If a stranger down the pub came up to you and said that if you pay them a lot of money, they could increase your chances of becoming pregnant by getting a cheap bit of plastic and waggling it around inside your uterus for five minutes, would you believe them? Probably not. But if that same advice came from a doctor and was given a fancy scientific sounding name, would you believe the doctor? Some fertility clinics offer what is known as add-on services as a supplement to the core treatment, i.e. in addition to a treatment like IVF. While these add-ons sound scientific, they lack any real evidence that they will increase your chances of getting pregnant. And many of these treatments are not just one-off payments. You'll have to pay for them every time you go through a treatment cycle, which can quickly add up to costing you tens of thousands. What's more is that some of these add-ons won't just harm your bank balance. Some may even reduce your chances of getting pregnant and may actually harm your health. On the left are a list of add-on services, which at the time of filming either lacked conclusive evidence that they can improve your chances of getting pregnant or are being offered in cases that do not require them. By the way, the last one on the list should not be confused with pre-implantation genetic diagnosis or PGD which is a legitimate treatment. This list is not exhaustive and new add-on services are being dreamt up all the time. So how do you stop yourself being taken in by one or more of these? Step one, ask to see the scientific evidence that proves that the add-on service increases the chances of getting pregnant. And don't be fooled by being shown newspaper articles some have misreported the effectiveness of these add-on treatments in the past. And don't accept anecdotal or coincidental evidence. Just because somebody had the add-on service and they got pregnant doesn't mean to say that the add-on service was the reason that they got pregnant. Step 2. Ask how it specifically improves your personal chances of conceiving. You see, everybody's situation is different. So make sure that any add-on treatment offered addresses a specific aspect of why you are having problems conceiving. Step 3. Look up the treatment on the website www.cochrane.org. This is the website of the Cochrane Organisation, which is a global independent network of 37,000 researchers and professionals. It is dedicated to providing scientific, evidence-based health information. It is independent and free from commercial sponsorship, along with other conflicts of interest. This website should tell you if an add-on service is worthwhile or not. I'll include a link to the Cochrane Organisation's website in the notes of this video. You never know, since filming this, one or more of the add-on services listed earlier may have been proved to work. Though definitely check before parting with your money. This concludes the video on how to avoid being ripped off by fertility clinics. If you have found this video at all useful, please like it as this encourages us to make more videos. Good luck and all the best for the future. If you have found this video useful, please like it. And if you would like to see more fertility related videos, check out our YouTube channel. And why not check out our website? conceptionadvice.com. Here you'll find all the latest information, help and guides. Goodbye and good luck.